location and video uh, for uh, specifically for the sleeve gastrectomy because obviously this is the most common procedure in weight loss surgery. So uh, how, how would you know that you're eligible for the sleeve? So what we do is we do uh, a calculation, a simple calculation of your uh, uh, body mass index, which is basically your weight divided by your height squared. Um, as you can see in the table, uh, we classify uh, your degree of obesity based on your BMI, your body mass index, and uh, a normal body mass index ranges between 20 to 25. Uh, anyone uh, between 25 and 30 is overweight, and anyone above 30, we consider them obese. So uh, this gradually increase in, in grades, so grade one is from 30 to 35, then uh, 35 to 30 uh, to 40 is uh, grade two obesity. Starting grade three, which is uh, BMI above 40, we define it as a morbid obesity, which means basically means you're more likely to have uh, problems that is directly related to uh, obesity, such as hypertension, diabetes, and so forth. So who's eligible for surgery? Anyone above 35 uh, or above 40 BMI. Above 35, there are, uh, there are some conditions. You need to have two medical uh, diseases that are directly related to obesity, such as hypertension, diabetes, uh, back pain, uh, problems with your breathing, problems with your sleep, cholesterol levels high, uh, any of those. If you have two of them and your BMI between 35 and 40, you're eligible for the sleeve. What is the sleeve gastrectomy? As I said, uh, the sleeve is the most commonly performed procedure worldwide. And this was actually announced back in 2013 uh, in one of uh, in the big Congress, uh, International Congress, the American uh, Congress of uh, Weight Loss Surgery uh, in Atlanta. Uh, uh, this year we learned, uh, in 2013, we learned that sleeve gastrectomy has uh, become the most common procedure worldwide. Why is it the most common procedure? because it's simple, its principle is very simple, and the results are good. So this is uh, basically why it's the most common procedure. So what happens with this sleeve gastrectomy? We tend to resize your stomach by taking out around 70 to 80% of your stomach, leaving you with a new stomach that uh, limited in, in, in capacity. Uh, this results definitely results into reducing the amount of food you take. And uh, I always say, as a, as a byproduct of taking out this part of the stomach, we realize that uh, the hormone responsible for your craving uh, drops. Therefore, uh, you're not as hungry as before. And even when you get hungry, you eat just a little bit and you feel full real quick. So how can we prepare for the surgery? Preparation uh, is easy. Uh, what we do, we, you schedule an appointment uh, at my office. And once I do uh, a, quick, a quick physical exam and take your history, uh, I then uh, write uh, the labs. For people who, who travel or living abroad, uh, we replace this visit, because obviously you can visit, we replace it with a health questionnaire. So this is a basic uh, sort of uh, uh, pre-op checkup. Uh, once uh, this is cleared, uh, we arrange for a phone consult uh, while you're still in your country. And then uh, after that, uh, definitely we need uh, a, a pre-op uh, appointment and this will be done at the hospital as I will explain later. Uh, so uh, once we're done with the questionnaire or the, or the clinic checkup, we go for the pre-op labs. There are a couple of pre-op labs and x-rays that we order. Uh, for people living here or uh, people who are planning to come early, uh, they can always do those uh, labs and x-rays before hospital admission. For people who are traveling, we uh, prepare or arrange for uh, uh, a pre-surgery hospital admission. So you can get admitted at the hospital like uh, one or two days before the surgery. Uh, some people fly in from the airport. We arrange for a ride for you uh, from the airport into the hospital. Uh, the following morning, uh, uh, we we'll arrange for some labs to be done and later in the afternoon, you do the x-ray. Um, uh, I usually see you on the second day, or sometimes I see you uh, uh, depending on, on, on how early you come in. Uh, so I either, uh, either see you uh, uh, one day before the surgery or on the same day of the surgery, in early in the morning. Once everything is uh, ready, uh, we book the surgery, and um, I will uh, wait for you uh, down at the OR, and we call you in once, uh, once the OR is ready and everything is prepared. 
uh, once uh, you're uh, in the OR, uh, the anesthesia team takes over uh, at the beginning. Uh, they start giving you the medicine and all the anesthesia drugs. Uh, usually the surgery takes any, anywhere between 45 to an hour and a half, depending on how big uh, uh, you are, how much fat, how, how much internal fat you have, and, and definitely how big the, your liver is. Because what happens, uh, this is your liver. It's usually uh, l uh, lying above or on the stomach. We need to take it away, for, push it aside, uh, away from the stomach in order to complete the procedure. So if your liver is too big, this can hinder the procedure. This can affect the length of the procedure and definitely the outcome. So in certain patients, we might uh, require a pre-op uh, liquid diet, a, a downstaging diet that uh, we use to reduce the size of your liver because uh, it can, uh, we've seen a couple of gigantic livers that uh, got in the way and we, we, can, we it, it took us a while in, in order to complete the procedure. So we don't want, uh, this to happen so in certain people be prepared uh, we uh, based on certain criteria be prepared to be on a liquid diet for two weeks before the surgery so how is the procedure done as you can see once you're wheeled in into the OR and anesthesia uh, uh, did their job uh, we start introducing what's called trocars which are uh, small uh, holes into uh, your, st your uh, uh, belly uh, through which we we'll introduce our instruments uh, the sleeve is done and uh, the whole principle of the procedure is done uh, through stapler guns and staples and uh, the, the, the technology and advancement in those staples is really what made the surgery uh, uh, a lot safer definitely we uh, we modified the technique in many ways to reduce the instances of problems that can happen and i would give the credit also to, to the design of the staplers that is continuously being uh, modified and advanced uh, yearly in order to have the best outcome. As you can see, uh, this is the stomach. Uh, what we do is uh, the stomach is attached to your belly with uh, into, into your abdomen with a lot of fat. We free out this fat and once everything is free and ready, we start our stapling. As you can see, we start our stapling vertically all the way uh, uh, up into the stomach. Uh, to take out almost 70 to 80 percent of the stomach. Technically, it's not about how much we're taking out, about how much we're leaving it. This is more logical, to a way of thinking. Uh, how do we calibrate uh, the amount of stomach that is left? Uh, how do you measure uh, the size? Uh, we use uh, certain uh, tubes, specially designed tubes, that help us calibrate the size of the stomach that is left. And uh, recently we've been using uh, a specially designed tube specially uh, designed in size as well uh, based on research that has uh, shown us that uh, uh, this particular size of the tube has the best outcome uh, the best amount of weight loss with minimal complications um, so this is how we tend to measure how big uh, of a stomach we leave you with um, is there any way to uh, to decrease the chances of complications. Uh, definitely this, the design of the staplers has uh, been modified. This, the, the technology that, that has been invested in this stapler shape and the way they hold up the stomach after the, the firing of the staple has uh, definitely decreased the instance of complications. Also the way we do the surgery has also decreased the instance of complications. There are certain technical points and steps uh, that can uh, avoid uh, many complications. Uh, we also tend to do another thing. We uh, routinely cover our staple line with a running suture. We believe that this adds an extra layer of protection other than the staples itself. And research has also proven that it decreases the instance of bleeding. Uh, so something that doesn't take a lot, it's just a small extra step, it takes a couple of minutes and uh, we believe it in decreased the instance of complication and it's science has proven that it decreased the instance of bleeding then why not do it so once the surgery is done and we make sure everything is uh, fine and in order uh, we wake you up and uh, you go back into your room uh, people always ask me will there be any pain so the whole principle of minimally invasive surgery is uh, it's minimal and in, in, in the level of its invasiveness. Therefore, 
pain, you would expect pain to be much less. Uh, but I always say the first night is, is a little bit pain. You can, you can feel a pain uh, at your stitches. Uh, you can feel a gas pain, shoulder pain, back pain. This is normal, this is expected. But uh, the good news is um, any lady who had a previous cesarean section always tell me the pain is not even comparable to the cesarean section. Once you're back in your room, uh, we'll give you pain medication so you don't have to worry about uh, uh, pain. Uh, we usually give you a guide before the operation, uh, uh, sort of tell you what to expect uh, during your hospital stay. Uh, we would give you a guide on uh, what to take with you, uh, what kind of pain, how, how many nights are you staying, what not to, uh, what always, what, what you should uh, not forget to get with you. Uh, recovery, it's variable between different people. As far as the hospital say, it's usually one night uh, or maybe two nights. So 90% leave on after the first night. So the following day, you're out of the hospital. Uh, if we believe that you need another an extra night, uh, we tend to uh, uh, ask for you to stay for another night. Uh, when can I get back to work? Usually people say after four days, uh, it's as if nothing happened, as if they never had any, any kind of surgery. So uh, I always say give it a week or uh, seven to 10 days. Uh, people who are traveling, I always ask for them to stay for at least uh, another week or 10 days before flying out, even though you feel much better, but I just want to make sure everything is in the right order. Scars, uh, a lot of people are concerned about the scars, uh, especially ladies, young ladies. Um, so what we get with this, the conventional sleeve are a couple of scars that are right here at the upper abdomen. Uh, they are usually bit anywhere between four, five, or sometimes six uh, scars, the size of which is between uh, half a centimeter to uh, one, 1 1.2 or 1.5 centimeter, depending on the size of the trokers. Uh, this tends to heal well. And uh, it might, in some people, uh, if they have bad he wound healing, uh, those scars might be a little bit showy. Uh, if you're really concerned about the scars, uh, we give you some, some gel preparation that can help reduce this, uh, uh, the shape and, uh, and uh, the color of the scar. Uh, one other thing is uh, that we have developed a new, a new technique to do the sleep hysterectomy. And we've been doing this new technique uh, for over a year. So the new technique uh, is basically we hide all of your scars below the bikini line. So you won't have five or six scars showing on, on your upper abdomen, uh, right at, certain, uh, at center point here. What we uh, developed is that we hid all of your scars below the bikini line. So once uh, the weight is off, you can uh, probably we had a bikini without anyone knowing that you had a surgery before. Uh, this is our innovation. New, uh, innovation. Uh, we've been doing it, uh, doing it under the context of, of research over the past one year, and we are glad to announce that it has been accepted uh, in one of the biggest uh, medical journals, surgical journals in uh, the specialty of obesity surgery, and uh, it has been. Uh, presented at one of uh, the biggest international congress, the 22nd International Congress uh, in London this uh, just uh, past week. And uh, we're pretty optimistic about, uh, optimistic about the results. Uh, results are really promising. And uh, I have patients sending me pictures and telling me that they were in the locker room changing and they didn't need to tell uh, all their friends that uh, she had uh, the surgery even though she was one month out, she was fresh. If, if she had the, the, the regular scars up here, uh, anyone would ask, what, uh, what, what did you get? And uh, anyone would show that they knew that you had a surgery. So uh, this new technique uh, we offer to certain, uh, not, not to all patients. Uh, you have to be eligible for this technique. Obviously not everyone is eligible. So uh, please don't forget to ask if you're eligible for this technique or not. What we found is that uh, after one year, the same amount of weight loss, because basically it's the same technique, but on, we only do it uh, with a different approach. All the scars down uh, below and all, all of it are, are hidden. 
So after the surgery, we'll keep you on liquids for two weeks, then soft diet for another two weeks, and then we progress into the solid diet. Follow-up is very important. Um, throughout the follow-up, we'll modify your vitamins, we'll uh, do some regular uh, lab checks. So follow-up is really crucial. And uh, some patients do tend to uh, ignore that. And, uh, and I always say follow-up is very simple. We have many support groups on uh, social media, on WhatsApp. I have a direct phone number that I will give you direct to me uh, that uh, I'm very happy to receive any uh, inquiries, any questions, any concerns on WhatsApp. And uh, even though I get a lot of messages uh, every day, I tend to answer every question uh, based on uh, its importance and urgency. I, I answer all questions. So uh, even for people who are coming from abroad, uh, it's follow-up is as easy as hi doc I'm, I'm doing fine i'm doing so and so i'm eating like that i'm working out um, uh, it's very simple very easy i sometimes ask you to do some measurements definitely i'll get your weight progress and uh, some uh, waist measurements and hip measurements uh, follow-up is regular at three months interval at each interval we we uh, tell you to do uh, certain things we follow up your uh, diet we give you vitamins, modify the vitamins, ask for some labs. Finally, they ask me how much weight uh, am I expected to lose. Uh, there's no direct answer to that question because people are different. Sometimes we do a uh, sleeve gastrectomy for twins on the same day and uh, each one of them lose weight uh, differently. So what I, what I always say, uh, this is the pattern. This is the pattern of weight loss after sleeve or after bypass. The typical pattern of weight loss after sleeve gastrectomy is that in the first couple of days you feel lighter, your breathing gets better, so you feel a lot, a lot uh, you feel able to do a lot of stuff that you weren't able, and, I, and I'm saying in the first 10 days, as early as the first 10 days. Then at three months, everyone around you will notice uh, the change. Uh, and at six months, I always advise to uh, update your wardrobe. Uh, get rid of all of your uh, old clothes and get new stuff and definitely at one year is the final results uh, I hope uh, this video was uh, informative enough for you please do uh, leave uh, any questions or comments below and we'd be more than happy to answer uh, any of which thank you